Hello, my friends. This is Linda Lippin, and welcome to the Pilates Goddess Podcast. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back one more time to the Pilates Goddess Podcast. This is your host, Linda Lippin. I am so thankful for your being here. Today, I wanted to discuss with you what makes Pilates Pilates, because I'm seeing a lot of things in the world that are being called Pilates that really are not Pilates, um, including some equipment and, and some other other uh, class structures. So I thought I would give you my two cents on what makes Pilates Pilates. So number one, number one is that the work should have some relationship to the exercises and the system that Joseph Pilates created. Now, I'm not going to go all crazy classical on you because if you know me, you know that I'm really not that teacher. Okay. I have taught on every brand of equipment out there. I appreciate the joy of a light yellow spring on a reformer. Um, I have no issues with, uh, quote unquote, contemporary uh, Pilates. And frankly, there's a group of classical Pilates people that I have huge issues with because they're trying to maintain like legal control over the work of Joseph Pilates and just keep suing people in a very obnoxious way that really so far hasn't worked out well for them, but they keep doing it. So number one is, does the work have anything to do with what Joseph Pilates taught? And the reason why I say this is because number one, I see Pilates teachers asking about exercises that they actually learned in their Pilates training, but that really aren't Pilates exercises. So uh, Joseph Pilates made it pretty clear what his exercises were, especially on the mat. Um, there were definitely modifications and variations that can come out of that, that that's not a big deal. Um, but then you have these other exercises like the clamshell, which is not Pilates. Okay. There is no part of the Pilates side lying or sidekick series that involves that period, end of discussion. Um, so if you learned that and many variations of that as part of your training, I guess that's okay, but just know that it's not part of Pilates. Now, it's easy to at least get the list of the classical Pilates mad exercises. All you have to do is Google that and they will come up. I will actually put a link um, to a list in the show notes so that if you guys want to see the list, you can. But this is also the case for me on the apparatus. As far as I know, Joe very rarely taught just on one piece of apparatus, although, you know, he sometimes did. You know, obviously, if you're teaching uh, in an environment where there's only a reformer, you're just going to do Matt and Reformer, right? Um, obviously, if you're up in Jacob's Pillow and all you have is your Wanda chair, you're going to teach Wanda chair and Matt, you know? Um, but in general, you know, he treated Pilates or Contrology, as he called it, as a system of exercises that had, you know, he invented a ton of equipment. And there's the reformer and there's the Cadillac or the tower. There's the chair. There's the one to chair and the high chair or electric chair. There are three barrels. There's magic circles. There's foot correctors, spine correctors, low barrels, high barrels, um, pedipoles, head harnesses, <laughs> toe correctors, uh, all kinds of interesting uh, things that he put out into the world. And 
if you're, I mean, basically there's no such thing as reformer Pilates or tower Pilates. The It's a system of exercises. And in fact, a lot of the exercises on the apparatus are very similar to ones on the mat, except that they might add, you know, resistance and other things. I always say just because you can do it on a reformer doesn't make it a Pilates exercise. Okay, I'm saying it again. Just because you can do it on a piece of Pilates equipment like the reformer doesn't make it a Pilates exercise. So, you know, if you go to Club Pilates and you're doing all that plank work with your forearms on the box and your feet on the bar, you need to know that that's not Pilates. That is a made up series of plank exercises (laughs) that is not Pilates. Um, Are there similar exercises to that in Pilates? Yes, they tend to be a little bit more advanced. And again, if you are just doing classes on one piece of apparatus, what you're going to see is folks bringing in kind of fake Pilates, uh, more beginner or intermediate variations on advanced exercises, because ordinarily these would be things that you would be working on on the other pieces of equipment in a Pilates studio. So that's what I want you to start to think about, right? Is that some of the exercises that you're doing actually have nothing to do with actual Pilates exercises. (laughs) And because you're in a studio that has Pilates in the name, and sometimes even says it's related to classical Pilates, um, you then believe that rightly so that you're doing, you know, Joseph Pilates exercises, but a lot of the time, and I've been in these classes, you're not. Now, I actually don't mind that if people were just clear when they were teaching, this is an actual Pilates exercise and this isn't but we're doing it for this reason and it's good for you for this reason. I mean, I'm, I'm always down for something that has a good reason behind it um, and, you know, works something soundly, efficiently and without injury. Now, Another way to tell if what you're doing is really Pilates is sometimes really obvious because you'll see equipment that has a different name. Like at least if you walk into a club Pilates, I can tell you there's a spring wall. I can tell you um, there's a version of a Wanda chair. I can tell you that there is an actual uh, balanced body reformer um, in that space. The, these are all, this is all actual Pilates equipment. But if you walk into a studio and you're talking about a mega former, then that's not a piece of Pilates equipment. Okay. We, we in the Pilates world know not from the mega former. And from what I can tell online, the mega former is, has been responsible for, um, yeah, giving some people some crazy intense workouts, but also injuring a lot of people. I personally have worked with several people who were injured in Megaformer Studios. Again, you're doing a big class, you're working heavy, different things are moving, there's different things going on than there are on regular Pilates equipment. Um, And, you know, it can be a lot for your body, especially if you are coming in with some injuries or back pain or whatever. So... I just recommend that you, you know, really look at what you're doing, whether you're coming in as a consumer client or you're coming to this work as a, as an instructor that, uh, keep the Pilates Pilates (laughs) really. (laughs) Now, even though, uh, there are, good sound reasons for doing different kinds of exercises for modifying things. Know that there are some times where, I mean, even at uh, PMA conferences where 
folks have witnessed like springs being used inappropriately to do exercises that aren't actual Pilates exercises. And sometimes the springs have broken or straps have fallen off or other things have happened because the equipment is actually not made to do those kinds of movements. And you really can hurt yourself and you can hurt your clients. I mean, look, just moving around in life, let alone exercising, can cause people injuries, right? So why add more kind of, to use the old phrase, insult to injury by um, doing things that are new and exciting and different and aren't necessarily things that that equipment was built to do? If you are a client or you're somebody who's looking for teacher training, I encourage you to have conversations with the teachers, the owners, the managers of your studios. You know, what kind of Pilates are you teaching? What kind of Pilates equipment do you have? What background do your teachers have? Are they all comprehensively certified? Um, Where are they comprehensively certified from? There are a lot of programs out there right now, my friends, and a lot of them are not teaching anything close to what Joseph Pilates taught. And frankly, a lot of them are are fully online. And while, yes, I do continuing education and support for Pilates teachers fully online, I do not believe that teacher training can happen fully online. It can't. Because you need to be working with bodies. You need to be working with equipment. You need to be working with bodies on that equipment. People need to observe you and see what's going on. You need to be in a studio where you're also observing other people teach and see what other teachers do and what other clients do and how that all works. So you can see beginning clients getting taught, intermediate clients getting taught, advanced clients getting taught, people with injuries, people with issues, people who are healthy, dancers, whatever else. You want to be in an environment of activity where you can talk to people, ask questions, and really see what's going on. And you cannot do that fully online. You can't. It would be nice if you could, but you can't. Okay, so um, even for Matt, teacher training needs to be done in at least a partly live, partly in person situation. I, um, you know, I do hiring for some studios in the Caribbean and and other places, and that's the first thing I look for. I mean, if you come to me with an online only certification, no. Um, If you come to me with a certification that I either don't recognize at all or that is not uh, necessarily a fully comprehensive cert. And what I mean by that is that you know the barrels, you know the Cadillac, you've learned the tower, you've learned all the chairs, you've learned all of the things, including the reformer and the mat. Um. You know, I I can't take you either because I need teachers, both contemporary and classical, who know the system. And here's the thing. There are sometimes the same exercises on different pieces of equipment, sometimes easier, sometimes harder, sometimes just different, sometimes less stable, sometimes more, and sometimes less assistance, sometimes more assistance. And you need to understand the system and why you might give a client the chest expansion on the uh, Cadillac versus standing on the ta- on the Cadillac or tower versus on the reformer kneeling versus on the pedipole or the baby armchair standing. They are all the same exercise. They are all very different. But again, if you're not in a full studio, if you think that Pilates is only the reformer or only the tower or only the mat or only whatever, then you don't know that. You don't know that there are six different places in a studio that you could do the same exercise. And that when your teacher picks that place for you, they're picking a place that's going to challenge you. 
uh, in what you need, and that's still going to be safe and doable. So that's really what makes Pilates Pilates. What makes Pilates Pilates is having a teacher and an environment that treats Pilates as a system of exercises, as a system of apparatus, and as something invented by and created by Joseph Pilates and moves forward in that way. Now, I don't care if they're doing balanced body. I don't care if they're doing peak. I don't care if they're doing grots. I don't care, you know, uh, if they're doing stot, the the issue is, do they get that there is a full system? Do they understand all of the pieces of apparatus within that system, as well as the mat? Do they know and understand all of the exercises within that system? And then how to appropriately divvy these things up? Because that's what makes Pilates Pilates is that connection to the system, that connection to what Joseph Pilates created, um, that connection to um, what is the center of all of the moving parts. Okay. And if you are just going for reformer Pilates or just going for wall Pilates or whatever the hell you're doing, I'm telling you right now, you're doing yourself a disservice. You might be getting a good workout, but you know, I can get a good workout in a number of ways. And I do. Right? I lift weights, I do some high intensity cardio, I I do Pilates. I do yoga, I do other things, okay? Um so just because you're getting a good workout doesn't necessarily make it Pilates. <laughs> All right. So on that note, nice short episode today. I'm going to leave you with that. If you have questions, if you have comments, if you have concerns, if you have things that you would like me to talk about, got questions for me, I would love to hear them. So if you go to PilatesGoddess.com or just click the link in the show notes, you can hit contact in the menu and send me an email. You can also, on the right-hand side of that webpage, you can click send me a voicemail. And you can send me a voice message uh, that I will receive. And I will, in fact, answer your questions and go through your suggestions on the podcast. So thank you so, so much for listening. Happy beginning of September, beginning of of really like the fall push here in the United States. Um, And as always, if you like this podcast, please, please, please go to PilatesGoddess.com and leave a review. Go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Go to Spotify and leave a rating and review, um, because it all really, really helps me. So thank you. And I'll be with you guys again on Thursday. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Pilates Goddess podcast. Music brought to you by Nerd Salad. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, especially if you liked it. And please like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks.